Hello everybody, this is Boaz Feiler. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with a weekly evolutionary astrology message for the week between October 28th and November 4th. So this is an important week on regards of relationship and income. Both heightened subjects at the moment were last week, are today as well as the square between Pluto or Hades, Lord of the Underworld, and volcanoes and everything emotional flowing beneath our conscious surface. And the revelations of life and death, the revolutions of life and death. Squaring, squaring Venus, the goddess of love and relationships, of contentment and of income. So revolutions in all of these subjects and a need to evolve and transcend over limitations with uh, love relationships and with income so we will have more satisfaction in our lives and greater power this is at its height this saturday the 28th and it's going to dissipate during next week, but we still are going to feel it. And to that aspect adds another aspect. I think on the 3rd of November, we're going to have a, an exact opposition between Venus and Uranus, the planet ruling uh, Aquarius. And Uranus is about rapid changes. It's glyph is to electrical currents so changes could could really be immediate and and unexpected on the one hand in relationships or regarding income or things that satisfy you in your life but there's also a great need and urgency with Uranus for an update an update in what? An update in our relationship, an update in our income, an update in the way we satisfy ourselves. And when that aspect occurs, and when that aspect occurs in the sky, we become very impatient. And we want to move ahead. And if our partner doesn't move ahead, and when I'm talking about partner or someone we have a relationship with, of course, our primary romantic relationship is, is, is on top of everything else but we're talking about any kind of relationship friendships work based relationships as well any kind of relationship I have with an, exter an external um, uh, subject or person and when Uranus stands uh, opposing Venus, we want to get ahead. And if we're not getting that feedback from our environment, we can be very impatient and have a short fuse and start looking outside for that upgrade too soon. Many of us don't have the patience and the tolerance to look within the relationship for that renewal. And that causes it to be a time that many times there are changes in the statuses of relationships. People who are single can find partners, while people who have partners can lose them. So that adds up to the mix. Um, let's get back to the 30th. The 30th is a moon conjunct Neptune day in Pisces. It's a day that we're all little astronauts. A little out there not a very good day to do left brain uh, uh, tasks so not a very good day for calculating being objective being logical doing tasks that require lock, a lot of mental effort is a great day to go out to nature to do anything artistic anything spiritual anything creative anything emotional we could be very sensitive on that day as well so mind that and Pamper yourself on that day and, and keep it simple and keep it, uh, 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 keep it with people who, who love you and, make, and let you feel loved. On the 31st, we have the moon conjunct Chiron square Saturn. And talking about the moon conjuncting that Chiron square Saturn, which is exact, again, for the third time, if I'm not mistaken, this year, 
we're going to have an exact square between Chiron and Saturn. Maybe the two most uh, karmatic planets in the sky. Of course, we know that Saturn connects with karma. It connects with our role in front of other people out in the public and so to our career many times. And it connects to our relationship with paternal and, and, and male um, authoritative figures in our life and thus connect to our father. But Chiron is very karmatic as well. It's about old pain that we meet again and again and again. Of course, this life is like a spiral. So if we're doing our work right, we're moving up that sp spiral and transcending, but we're still moving around the same themes. We're just meeting them on a higher level. So Chiron is about reoccurring pain or weakness that we meet again and again and again in our life, creating a humbling experience of wisdom. A humbling experience of wisdom. A humble wisdom, you know, or, or, or wisdom through uh, humility. Wisdom through humility. Okay, but it, it, if, if this pain is reoccurring again and again in our lives, this purging is taking, is taking, is, is taking part. There must be a karmatic reason for it. It can't be that we are going through this purging again and again and again in our life, and there is not a karmatic reason for it. That makes sense, doesn't it? So Chiron is very karmatic as well. And we have these two karmat the karmatic couple putting a martial, a square is often conceived as putting a Mars between these two planets. Creating action, creating tension, creating friction, creating a challenge. So we could be much more sensitive on, on that time. And we could feel that karmatic subjects in our life or places that we owe karma come up. And we might need to pay our dues, so to speak. You know? Or that other people in our lives are feeling the same way, you know? And it's also about strong, stable places, authoritative places in our life in general or in our personal lives being challenged and showing us how humane and weak they are, how vulnerable they are, okay, and, and really shaking that balance a little bit. So we're having it for the third time this week and it's going to be exact on the third, but on the 31st the moon is going to conjunct Chiron and fuel I'm sorry, fuel that square. So it's a very sensitive day. Pamper yourself that day as well. And, 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 uh, and just surround yourself with people that you love and make you feel loved. And don't be too critical or too judgmental with yourself or with others. On the 1st of November, the moon is in feisty Aries opposing Mars in Libra. So that in itself says that this is a very carnal day, this is a very emotional day, this could be a, 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 a day that we are too headstrong and answer back to f in, a, in a fiery manner or are confronted by that kind of male aggression in this world. And we need to make sure that we stay on the side of peace and harmony on the one hand but don't let ourselves become martyrs or cancel ourselves out on the other because venus um venus on that day is conjunct vista and queen cogs chiron so let's let's break that apart a minute venus conjunct vista the goddess of the sacred fire Again, let's take Venus in the broader sense of satisfaction in our life. We could be zealots regarding our satisfaction in our lives 
on these days of the 1st and the 2nd of November. Not willing to compromise regarding our satisfaction on the one hand. On the other hand, the Queen Kongs to Chiron is about letting go, it's about purging, it's about cleansing, and it's about being a kind of a martyr and understanding that these things that I'm letting go of are actually providing that, that that let go of that attachment can provide a healing in my life. <laughs> so look at these opposites. On the one hand, feeling like you cannot let go of that status, that which satisfies you in your life, and that you need to be true and loyal to that sacred satisfaction. And on the other hand, knowing that if you let go of these attachments, that would actually provide a healing in your life. And of course, even if that uh, aspect in the sky sits comfortably with our natal chart, so we don't really feel the negative aspects of that during that day, we could still be faced with people who do. So try to support yourself and people around you during these sensitive days next week and on the second we have that uh, Saturn square Chiron exact and we have a moon square Pluto God sakes the drama we could be much more dramatic for our own good uh, on the second and please try to take a step away a step back from your emotions on the second become more logical, a little bit more detached, and look at the strategic aspects of things and not on the here and now. And Venus, Queen Cox, Chiron, again on that day, it's about letting go, and it's about purging, and it's about cleansing, and it's about understanding that we've been going to the same wells again and again and again, and every time they've been providing us with less juice less drinkable water and we're becoming thirstier and thirstier and if we'll keep on looking for uh, sustenance in places in old places that used to provide us with a lot of comfort but ha are drying up it would be frustrating it could be very frustrating so it is us that need to take the initiative or it's, it's, it's a bucket full of sand after you became really, really thirsty from hoisting it up from the well, a bucket full of sand. Okay, so making the choice of letting go myself, not letting that come to me from life and be subjected to it. And on the third, we have the moon conjunct Uranus in Aries, opposing Jupiter. So this is a carnal day. This is a feisty day. This is a day with a lot of male energy and a very short fuse. And we have to be much more tolerant <laughs> and, and not as fast and reactive. On the third... And opposing Jupiter, you know, this is either us asking too much or people having expectations that are too high from us. This is idealism meeting realism, okay, meaning scientific thought. This is about freedom and, 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 uh, and ideology meeting uh, advanced knowledge and, and, and fact. Okay, so we could also feel like we want to get on and move with and move on with things while other people just put their legs up and not do enough, or we could be the ones wanting to put our legs up while we need to get ahead in life. And we have the exact Venus in Libra opposing. Uranus in that day, on that day as well. And that <laughs> is all an energetic build-up for the fourth, which is a full moon in 11th 
degrees Taurus 59 minutes square series or Demeter as she is as she is called in the Roman uh, in the in the Greek mythology so a full moon in Taurus you know this all all this week is a kind of an energetic build-up to the fourth and we're gonna feel it on the fourth now before I say anything a full moon in Taurus is an amazing time for love and enjoyment and just celebrating the fact that you are alive in a body breathing having five senses most of us having five senses smelling those beautiful flowers and the Sabian symbol for for the 11th degree of Taurus is a woman sprinkling flowers or watering her garden of flowers so just that pageant aroma of life seeping into our nostrils that beautiful music and 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 the song of the birds in our ears the aesthetics of this world of leaves moving in the wind and the 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 the, the shape of of the clouds and of course females and males around us okay and that brings me to uh, our our and anything so we were in our eyes we were with our ears we were with our noses now it comes to our mouths everything uh, uh, we could taste or drink and then everything that we can touch and love okay so this is a great time to be attached to your body and to celebrate it and to enjoy it with people that are close and dear to you but that's exactly the problem as well we could be too hedonistic in that time as well and too self-absorbed about keeping our satisfaction about keeping our enjoyment about enjoying ourselves and having peace and quiet and tranquility and stability and not letting that outside world and all these people meddle with that equilibrium that we've achieved and crawl underneath our uh, our fences so to speak and infiltrate that biosphere that we've created here on our Turian island so we can become upset with any disturbance from the outside world and we could be really stubborn with that moon in, in, in Taurus so we need to watch that and it's square series or Demeter as she as, as she is called as well the mother of Persephone read the mythology on that that's an amazing story of how she went down to hell and back up again and that's how the um, the seasons were created but that's another story so that full moon squares Ceres and whenever there's an aspect like that to Ceres a challenging aspect to Ceres it's all about how much I'm giving and how much I'm getting back am I giving too much and do I remain depleted or am I being refueled from the environment by what I am giving and maybe I'm not giving the right things to the outside world or to the people around me or maybe I'm not giving it in the right way maybe I need to receive different things so this is always a subject when series is wearing uh, like that I think that's about it for this week I want to thank you for listening and I want to mention that I have an online course via a webinar you can study an hour and a half a week with me uh, and no evolutionary astrology yourselves I have a beginner course and I have an advanced course and I have workshops and for more details of course you can contact me I'd love you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, that's Evolutionary Astrology Forecast, and like my Facebook page, Profiler Astrology, and of course, for private consultations, oh, here's Georgia. Tail! You saw that tail! <laughs> and for private consultations, and any question you might have regarding astrology, feel free to contact me, and I'll be starting having live sessions, which you can participate in very shortly. So, your comments are blessed because they help me spread these videos and of course your likes and your shares. Thank you everybody and have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.